Doctor, we're at the Cancer Control Society convention, and, and you spoke earlier today on chelation and cancer and their relationship. Can, how are those two tied together? Can you talk about that? That's an interesting. That was, yeah. Lorraine Rosenthal gave me the subject. She she said, well, let's mm -hmm. do chelation and uh, cancer prevention. Well, prevention's a hard subject to deal with. How do you know when you're preventing something? Mm -hmm. It's purely statistical, really. Uh, if a certain percentage of people under a certain common circumstance get cancer at a certain rate, then you say, okay, what can we do to change that rate? Well, uh, it's, there's a lot of information, but I want to boil it down to a study by Dr. Walter Blumer. This is Dr. Walter Blumer, B-L-U-M-E-R, he's a doctor in Switzerland, small town in Switzerland. And he was working part-time with the coroner's office in that small town. And he noticed that a lot of people who lived near the highway in town, there was one highway through the town, a lot of people who lived near that highway were dying of cancer. So there was a, there was a higher rate of cancer death in these people near the highway and than there were in people who lived in the same town but farther, like half a mile or more from the highway. Mm. And there's been other studies that suggested a relationship there, and he figured out that maybe the leaded gasoline from the cars, the 4,000 cars a day that drove through the town uh, were, were causing lead poisoning and, and uh, thereby cancer, somehow or other changed cancer. So he embarked on a study and he took uh, 59 patients over the years. He chelated them. They each got 10 chelations. A, a chelation therapy uh, it looks like it just looks like a simple IV. You're sitting in a chair and you have an IV hooked to your arm. You got a bottle up there with a line going up to the bottle, and and you get the IV and and then we can check the urine to see how much lead comes out in the urine, and and uh, and that's a therapy as well as a test. You don't have to do the test every time, but he found that people who had over 10 chelations in their in their health period, um, if they had more than 10 chelation treatments. Uh, their rate of cancer was enormously reduced. I mean, just, uh, so the 59 patients who had 10 treatments or more uh, over an 18-year period had had one case of cancer. It was a 1.7 percent, 1.7 percent. Whereas the people who didn't get treatment, there, there were 170 some who didn't get the treatment, but they were they were. Uh, almost identical in their parameters as far as their health parameters. They they had no um, uh, they they had no significant differences according to scientific analysis. They were same number of men and women, same same number of smokers, same number of, of, of drinkers, uh, same number of stress, same amount. You know everything. They, every parameter was identical except the ten chelations or more. And those who didn't get the chelation had 30 cases of cancer out of 172 people, and that came out to 17 percent. So, so 1.7 percent versus 17 percent is a factor of 10, and that, was, and that meant that there was a 90 percent reduction in cancer in the people who got the chelation. And 90% reduction is enormous. That's an enormous statistic. Yeah. Now, you know, pure science would say, well, it wasn't a really well-controlled study because it wasn't randomized and we, it wasn't double-blinded. But it was 90%. Yeah. And, and, uh, and these people were well-evaluated by highly scientific measures. So they were really identical except for the 10 chelations. That's a big exception, but that's a big difference. If it had been... 40% reduction or 20 or 60% mm -hmm. reduction but 90% reduction that's impressive and also you know I've been I was president of the American of the uh, ACAN American College of mm -hmm. Advancement in Medicine we were instrumental in keeping chelation legal in this country cuz cuz the you know the, the in the box thinkers wanted to get rid of it cuz it wasn't scientifically proven and da 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 uh, but the doctors who give chelation, you know, our members who do chelation, do all do it on themselves as well as their patients. Mm -hmm. Which do it on themselves, their family. I, w I want my family to get chelation. I've had many chelations over the years. Uh, I've had at least 40 or 50 over the years. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know people who have had several hundred. Uh, and the incidence of cancer in our group is very small. It hasn't been measured officially, but I've known these people for 35, 40 years, and there's very low incidence of cancer mm -hmm. in my experience of our group. We really should do a scientific study on it, and that's one of my goals. But the, but the point I would make is that, is that we have, uh, we, we have all this, all this, inter all this opportunity, and the doctors give. The, the point I was going to make is the doctors give themselves chelation, and that doesn't happen with a lot of doctors doing other things. Mm -hmm. I don't think doctors doing chemotherapy take it very readily for themselves. Yeah. I don't think doctors treating with statin drugs for cholesterol take it very readily for themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas doctors who do chelation all do it for themselves, all do it for their patients, and for their patients, and for their family.